The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. For whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital. Where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Jimmy, I have been sitting here for the last half hour considering the matter from every possible angle. Hmm? And I can see only one conclusion. Conclusion? Matter? What are you talking about? Oh, Jimmy, put that book down, please. Hmm? Now, you have reached an age when you ought to start thinking about settling down. Oh, yes. Yes, so that's it. You ought to find some attractive young girl and get married. Well, let's see. It's 10.30 now. Who could I call up and ask? Oh, I don't mean tonight. Tomorrow, then? Oh, no, confound it. You know perfectly well what I mean. You ought to start thinking about it. All right, Dr. Gillespie. Huh? Well, what are you sitting there looking like a sick fish for? I'm thinking about it. Oh, stop. Look, you wouldn't have some particular person in mind, would you? Why, of course not. I've never tried to run your life, have I, Jimmy? No, no, no. You lean over backward. Well, maybe, you know. However, Mm -hmm. I have been noticing that little nurse on the fourth floor. Miss Ferner, I believe her name is. Why, doctor, at your age... No, I mean, I've been noticing her for you. Oh, for me. Well, confound it, Jimmy. Now I'm serious. Dr. Gillespie, there's a mad man downstairs. There's one up here, too. Oh, stop blowing your siren, Parker. What's the trouble? I just told you. It's a madman, and he's down at the receiving desk, and he came in a taxi, and he just phoned up here, and he wants a doctor, and his name is Mumpkin, uh, and his wife with him. Mumpkin? Oh, wait a second. Is that Willie Mumpkin? That's right, Dr. Kildare. His name's Willie, and his wife's going to have a baby any minute. Well, if she is, I'm crazy. I just examined her two days ago. Oh, she's a patient of yours, huh? Yes, and she isn't due here for at least three weeks yet. I can't doctor. understand what this is. Hey, doctor. Here he comes. I need a doctor. Where can I find me a doctor? Oh, there you are. Willie, what's all the Don't trouble? No time to talk. Just grab a bag and come on, doctor. They're taking her up in the elevator now. I haven't got a minute to lose. Why not? Why not? Well, you know why not. Because Betty Jane's going to have a baby. Next couple of weeks, maybe. I'm talking about tonight. That's what I mean, tonight. Any minute now. Maybe we're too late already. Come on, she's got pains all across here, and I had a heck of a time. Uh, Mr. Mumpkin, uh, what did your wife have for dinner this evening? Dinner? Hmm. Dinner? Well, why, some fried shrimp and a couple of pork chops and mm. fried potatoes, dill pickle, pistachio ice cream and strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, Willie, yeah. we think the only thing Betty Jane is going to have tonight is a case of indigestion. <laughs> Come on, let's go have a look at it. But, Dr. Kildare, I, I thought she was... Well, when she... I, I mean, I... I don't know anything about these things. Uh, Parker, that boy ought to be married. Oh, yes, Dr. Busby. I think every young couple ought to... Huh? Oh, confound it. I'm talking about Kildare, you idiot. Good 
Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. Well, good morning, Jimmy. Uh, Miss Werner and I were just talking about Miss you. Miss Werner? Oh, hello, Diana. I didn't see you. <laughs> we were just talking about that young man who came rushing in here with his wife last night. Oh, oh they're quite a couple. Come from some little farm town in Indiana. Mm -hmm. Willie's father runs the local newspaper, and Willie's here taking a course in advertising or something. They've only been married about a year. Well, I think it's just darling. The way he was so upset and excited and everything. Oh, yes, he's very serious about his approaching fatherhood. <laughs> and he should be, Jimmy. Uh -huh. He should be. Marriage is a great institution. Oh, I agree with you, Doctor. I think every family ought to have one. <laughs> <laughs> The door's unlocked. Come in. Thank you, Dr. Gillespie. Yeah. It is proper, you know, that one knocks before entering the room. Entirely unnecessary in your case, Carew. I can smell your gardenia 20 feet away. Please. Not in front of the... Well, that is, we must remember our discipline, you know. Uh, yeah. Dr. Gillespie, I believe I'd better take those reports now, if you're through with them. Uh, wait a second, then. Bernard, I'll get rid of this fellow. Carew, what's on your mind? My business is with Dr. Kildare, if it's quite all right with you, of course. Well, come on, then. Come on and get it over with. Oh, dear. What sort of business is it, Dr. Carew? It's one of your patients, Dr. Kildare, a Mr. Lumpkin. Oh, Willie. He's yeah. creating a disturbance on the seventh floor. Has been all morning, and no one can do a thing with him. What's he doing here, anyway? There are no visiting hours this time of the morning. Precisely the message I sent him, Dr. Gillespie, and he told the nurse to tell me that I could... Well, I wouldn't care to sully myself by repeating his remarks. <laughs> Hooray for Willie. <laughs> Dr. Gillespie, I... I... Oh, dear, I... I must run along. If I stay here another minute, I'll be ruined for the entire day. Utterly ruined. Dr. Gillespie, I leave the matter entirely in your hands. Yeah. You got him so flustered, he didn't even say what this disturbance is. Well, I guess I'd better go see what... Uh, oh, I'll take care of it, Jimmy. I'll be glad to. Uh, you stay right here now and talk to... to uh, what in tarnations happened to her? Oh, she left. No interest in therapeutic romance, I guess. Yeah. A great horn spoon. Come on, Cupid. Let's go talk to Willie. Yeah. <laughs> Going up, Dr. Kildare. We're not playing the 1812 overture on this record machine just to entertain ourselves. We've got a purpose. Purpose? Willie, would that purpose have anything to do with this book on the theory of relativity? Well, sure. I've been reading it out loud to Betty Jean. Uh. You see, we want them to have the right kind of a brain. Oh, prenatal influence, <laughs> eh? Yeah. Well, of course, I don't actually believe in it, Dr. Kildare, but, mm. well, Willie figures there's no harm in trying. Oh, I guess there isn't. Only how about using a low-volume influence? The superintendent's complaining about the noise. Well, maybe it was a little loud. Oh, and another thing, Willie. No guests in the room, please, except at visiting hours. But, gosh, Betty Jane's gonna have a baby. She needs me. For what? Willie, if you're going to live here at the hospital, you'll have to make your headquarters in one of the lounges. Okay. Now, honey, you send for me if anything happens. All right, Willie. Now, if they don't come for me, you yell. All right, Willie. I'll be back later, Betty Jane. Oh, gosh, I still can't imagine her about to be a mother. Then you better get ready for a shock. But she's so young. Of course, I'm 21, but... Betty Jane's still just a kid. Well, she'll go out of that. You were young once, too, you know. Willie, as an experienced husband and a prospective father, what's your opinion of marriage in general? Oh, it's great, Dr. Gillespie. Uh, Terrific. I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, and you'd advise every young man who's still single to get married. Is that right? Oh, sure. There's nothing like it. Yep. You see, Kildare... It's just like I've been telling you now. Now, where that tarnation did he go? All right, all right, all right. Kildare speaking. Doctor, this is Willie Munkin. Oh, oh what is it, Willie? Doc, I, I gotta see you right away. Why, at 2 a.m.? What, what's the matter? It's something I just found out. Uh, 
story in a book, something we forgot about. Forgot? We haven't got a minute to spare. Maybe it's even too late already. Really, what on earth are you talking about? It's the R.H. factor, Dr. Kildare. Oh. Maybe Betty and me are one of those rare couples that shouldn't have gotten married. Maybe our blood is incompatible. Maybe our son won't Willie, Willie, and... Willie, hold it a second, please. Look, I checked the R.H. factor when your wife first came to me seven months ago. You did? Yes. Well, was it all right? Yes. Supposing it weren't, what would you do about it now? Well, I, I don't know, but I just read about it in one of these books. Uh, where are you, anyway? I'm down in the lounge. I've been sleeping on a sofa. Well, go back to sleep, then. You've got plenty of time. A couple of days or so. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll just read some more of these books here. A great idea, Willie. You do that. Good night. <laughs> see any reason why these reports have to be made out tonight, Dr. Gillespie. They're not due for another week yet. Well, it's always a good idea to get them done ahead of time, Jimmy. Now, I've had uh, Miss Vernon oh. sign to help you, and you can use this private office here. But it's nearly midnight. Oh, don't worry about me as far as time is concerned, Dr. Kildare. I'd be on floor duty anyway. Oh, I know, Diana, but I don't think you understand the sly schemings of this man's mind. Dr. Gillespie? Hmm. Oh, it doesn't take an x-ray to see through him. Then it's all settled. You go right on in there now. It's nice and quiet, and you won't be bothered. No, I'm sure we won't. Shouldn't take over an hour or two. And maybe you could have a sandwich or something at the Wolver Sullivan's. Or go dancing, maybe. <laughs> It'll be early enough. But I'm still on duty, Dr. Glass. Ah, don't worry, Miss Byrne. I'll take care of everything. Yes, up to and including the final bless you, my children. Oh, now, Jimmy, I am merely trying to get certain necessary work done in the most efficient manner I can. Oh, there you are. Well, Parker, what do you want? Nothing from you. Good. Dr. Kildare, the confinement ward just called. They're sending a patient of yours to the delivery room. Oh, well, I was... Can't you see Kildare's busy? I'll take care of this thing. You'll take care of it. Hmm. Dr. Gillespie, this is an OB case, and you haven't delivered a baby in 14 years. Well, I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll... I'll get somebody. Uh, Parker, it isn't that young Mrs. Mumpkin, is it? That's right, Dr. Kildare. You missed your guess by about eight hours. Oh, it seems. Well, I've got to get to work. Diana, I guess you may as well go back on floor duty. Very well, Doctor. No, Jimmy, let's work this thing out somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll send one of the interns. No wholesale, Doctor. This one's on me. Oh, by the way, where's Willie? I thought he'd be war hooping in the corridors when this finally happened. Oh, he's out there in the lounge, Dr. Kildare. Sound asleep. Shall I wake him? Oh, good heavens, no. With all those books he's read, he'd probably want to hang over my shoulder and tell me what I was doing wrong. Well, I've got a date with the store. See you later. Now, wait a minute, Jimmy. Wait a minute, you dick. Ah, confounded young scatterbrain. Oh, Pooh. You're just mad because he's independent and won't take orders. Take orders? Uh, help me, I'll get that boy married if I have to, if I have to... Marry him yourself? Oh, shut up! We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. I'm sorry, Mr. Mumpkin, but it wouldn't have done a bit of good if they had waked you. There are times, you know, when a man is entirely superfluous. Well, maybe so, but at least I'd know what was happening. How do I know what's going on in there? Well, 
If I thought it'd make you feel any better, I'd tell you. And but... another thing, Parker. I've been reading up on this kind of stuff, and I wanted to make sure everything was done right. Yes. I think that's exactly what Dr. Kildare was afraid of. Now, why don't you sit down there? Sit down? How can I sit down when I'm going through this? You don't know. You've never been a father. No, you certainly won't get any argument on that. Well, the way I figure it, a man's got special rights when he's having a baby. Definitely, Mr. Mumpkin. His wife, for instance, should be out giving away cigars instead of loafing in bed. Well, I mean, of course, it's Betty Jane who's having the baby, but after all... What do you suppose they're doing in there so long? Mm, I don't know. Maybe it's twins. Oh, no. No, no, don't say that. Don't even think it. What's thinking got to do with it? Oh, well, here comes Dr. Kildare. Well, then it's over. I mean, is it, Doctor? Yes, it's over, Willie. You can uncross your fingers now. How's Betty Jane? Fine. They'll have her back in her room in 10 or 15 minutes. You can go down and wait for her if you like. Oh, gosh, i got to sit down and uh, do that. Yeah. Oh, boy. Hey, where's the baby? In charge of the maternity nurse at the moment. And no visitors before tomorrow morning. All right, but I, I've been wondering about something I read in one of those books. Oh. Well, the way I get it, you put a whole bunch of babies all together in the same room. And what's to keep them from getting mixed up? Is that it? Well, I sure don't want somebody else's. I want mine. And for better or worse, Willie, that's exactly what you'll get. We've already taken footprints. There won't be any mix-up. Well, good. I was afraid you might forget. Oh, yes. We're continually misplacing children around the hospital here. Oh, boy. Just wait till you hear about this back home. Just wait till Betty Jane's mother hears about it. Well, I doubt if it'll be a great surprise to her. No, but she's always treated me like a kid. Hey, what am I doing here? I want to see my wife. Oh, by the way, Willie. Huh? Wouldn't you like to know what kind it is? Kind? Why, it's... It's a boy, isn't it? Mm -mm. A girl? What else is there? Oh, well, at least it's a baby and it's here. That's the important thing. Sure. And better luck next year. Next year? Look, Dr. Kildare, you don't think I'm ever going to go through with a thing like this again, do you? There's no question about it, Jimmy. The best time of day around a hospital is after 10 o'clock in the evening. Well, could be. No doubt of it. Just listen. Everything quiet and peaceful. It's a time for leaning back and taking stock of things. All right, Doctor. And for considering the past. For planning the future. And for getting ready to lead up to something. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, no it's not anything. Just falling in with your mood. Jimmy, we are not getting any younger, you know. Yes, I can uh, feel a certain profundity in that statement. Time seems to be slipping away from us. So it does, so it does. Maybe we'd better make out those reports before it's too late. Reports? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I was coming to that. Yes, I thought you were. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I thought you might want to get them out of the way tonight. I'm glad to. Yeah. There's someone here to help you. I just phoned a few minutes ago. Now I wonder who that could be. As if I didn't know. Ah, oh, confound it, Jimmy. She's a very attractive girl. I agree. And it's time you were settling down with a wife. Well, when I do, Dr. Gillespie, it won't be on your diagnosis or your prescription. Ah, oh, Jimmy, now that, that hurts me. It really hurts me. Yes. Why, I wouldn't think of trying to run your life for you. I wouldn't think of trying to prescribe any particular kind of... Well, Doctor? Now, Jimmy, be nice to her. Don't jump to conclusions. Look her over. All right, sure. Come in, Miss Verna. Miss Verna? Uh, <laughs> hello, Willie. Come on in. I uh, sure hate to bust in this time of night, and I guess you were expecting somebody else, but I got to talk to you about something pretty terrible. No, what's the trouble now? Well, it's the snapshot of the baby. I got a candid camera, you see, and I've been sneaking up to the nursery with it. Mm, good picture. Yeah, but look at the face, Dr. Kildare. What do you mean? Well, she don't look like me, and she don't look like Betty Jane. In fact, she's a dead ringer for a great aunt of mine that's, well, daffy. <laughs> I mean, she's not real crazy, but... <laughs> Willie, all babies look that way for the first few weeks. Now, please, please, go to bed and stop worrying. Well, if you say so, Dr. Kildare. 
But gosh, when I saw that face, I... Good night, Willie. Good night, good night. Good night, Dr. Gillespie. Good night. Good night. Now, one thing about this place, after ten in the evening, it's always so quiet and peaceful. Yes. Young idiot. Mm, No, no, no. He's a family man with worries and responsibilities. He's uh, married. I don't care whether he's married. All right, Jeffy. All right. You promise to keep an open mind. It's wide open. Come in, Miss Werner. I am not, Miss Werner. Uh, Carew. Precisely. Well, what do you want? Well, I could say a little more respect, Dr. Gillespie. Yeah. Please. Dr. Gilder, you must positively do something about this, this bumpkin person. Oh, what's he been up to now? Oh, merely his usual career of menace. He's been firing some kind of flash gun in the nursery, scaring babies half out of their wits. No, yes, yes, he was taking pictures. It doesn't matter what he was doing, Dr. Kildare. We simply cannot have that sort of thing, and you know it. All right, Carew, you've spilled it. Now, good night. Dr. Gillespie. We'll take care of it in the morning. Uh, As a matter of fact, I think I'd better speak to Willie tonight. Jimmy. No, no telling what he might do before morning. Come on, Dr. Carew. I'll walk out to the elevator with you. Hi. Hi. Gildare, come back here. Those reports, you know. Gildare. Ah. Confounded tarnation. I never saw such a stubborn, headstrong young fool in my life. Won't take advice. Won't listen to reason, won't... Doc! Parker! Come in here! Well, don't stand there knocking like an idiot. Open the door! Well, I'm sorry, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, Miss Verner. Yes. Well, I was expecting someone else. But you did send for me, didn't you? Send for you? Well, I, uh... uh, Miss Verner, if I did, and at this point I am not quite certain then you'd better just regard the whole thing as an unfortunate mistake. We've got that taxi waiting downstairs, but Willie and I just had to run in and thank you before we left. Oh, no, honey. Oh, Dr. Gillespie, wouldn't you like to hold the baby for a minute? Oh, yes, yeah, surely, yes. Yeah. Thank you, oh. yeah. Well, Kildare, this young lady can thank you. I didn't have anything to do with it. Oh, I didn't have much to do with it either. Mainly it was just one of those natural occurrences. Well, don't call it just one. As far as I'm concerned, it's going to be the only one. Well, I don't know, Willie. After all those books you read on the subject, you should be an authority by the next time. Well, I guess I did kind of make a nuisance out of myself. Oh, well, it's a funny thing, you know. But I've been around this hospital for 35 years. And I haven't seen an expectant father yet who didn't. Well, Willie, we've got to run. I'm not supposed to stand up too much, you know. Okay, honey. Well, if either one of you ever get out in our part of Indiana, why, you drop in and see us. Oh, sure thing. Oh, yes, yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Oh, oh my oh. heavens, they forgot oh. the baby. Yeah. Hey, Willie. Yeah? Look. Oh, the baby. Oh, thanks very much for holding uh. him, Dr. Gillespie. Oh. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, now that that young maniac has departed safely with his baby, it's just barely possible we can settle down to normal business again. Uh, And by normal business, I'll lay five to one that you mean those uh, reports. Well, yes, yes. I I think we'd better get them out of the way, Jimmy. All right, I'll I'll make them out now. Good, good. Now, of course, you'll need some help. Mm -hmm. So I'll ring Molly Bird and ask you to... Assign somebody to... Uh, Dr. Gillespie, you may as well hang up the phone. What? You're wasting your time, you know. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I do. You see, Miss Verner left early this morning on a two-week vacation. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare.
And now, once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Oh, good morning, Dr. Kildare. Good morning, Parker. Dr. Gillespie in? Yes, he's there in his office. Just go right in. Thank you. Oh, come on, Diana. Oh, Miss Werner. I heard you were back from your vacation. Did you have a nice time? Oh, just marvelous. You busy, Dr. Gillespie? No, no, Jimmy, no, no, no. Come in, come in. I've got somebody with me. Uh, we want to show you something. Oh, Miss Werner. Well, come in, come in, both of you. I told Dr. Kildare he should just tell you about it, but he insisted that I show you. Show me? Well, I suppose that is the best idea. Well, you see, I knew you'd never believe it just hearing about it. You'd go right on prescribing as usual. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm afraid I... You show him, Diana. See, Dr. Gillespie, on my left hand. Ah, uh, by the great horn spoon. Engaged. That's right. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I'd given up hope. I didn't think you'd do it. We didn't. I decided you were just too cut fit. What did you say, Jimmy? Brace yourself, Doctor. What are you talking about? I just wanted Diana to show you her ring so you'd stop prescribing her. She's engaged. She's going to be married next month. But not to me. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Bill Tracy, Sharon Douglas, and Georgia Ellis. Dick Joy speaking.